The research is important because, you know, there's over the last 20 years there's been very little progress toward really understanding how the brain functions. What is the need, what is holding you back from being able to get the information that you need to uh, help unlock the brain's mysteries? I think one of the last frontiers of the, of the human body that um, remains to be um, uncovered and, and, and really discovered is, is the human brain. The Center for Bioengineering has many unique capabilities, one of which is actually developing chronic implantable neural interface devices and other biomedical devices that allows us access to the human nervous system in ways that were before possible. And so it allows us to actually both get an understanding of the brain and the other parts of the nervous system, the peripheral nervous system, the eye, the ears, all the sensory organs we have in a way that you can't currently do. So it allows us both to get this understanding as well as reverse the course of diseases that affect all the human nervous system. I think the innovative part about what we do over here is taking some of the fundamental discoveries that might be made in a purely academic setting um, and being able to scale those up in a manner that's highly engineered, reliable, safe, um, made with biocompatible and um, you know, approved materials so being able to transition uh, proof of concept technologies into actual use in the clinic. So one of the applications of these um, research deep brain stimulation devices that we're making is to get a better understanding of how deep brain stimulation therapy works. And uh, we're doing that by adding functionalities to study the brain that uh, functionalities like electrical stimulation, chemical stimulation, chemical sensing and drug delivery. These are um, capabilities that we previously were not easily able to do in a scientific platform. And so we have a lot of great imaging techniques, MRIs, functional MRIs that actually allow us to understand what happens when we get diseases and also what happens in a normal functioning brain. But to really understand the diseases on the level we need to treat them, we actually need to have the kind of information from the brain that's only available from these neural interface technologies. I work on a range of projects. I'm helping define and design the system. Uh, so basically incorporating the elements of surgical technique with the needs of the surgeons the design of the electrode arrays and also the design of the electronics integration. Uh, working with all the surgical teams, the electronics teams, uh, and the, the groups within uh, Lawrence Livermore National Lab to design and develop these systems. So the roles of our university collaborators at this point are to test our devices in vivo and to get the kind of um, scientific data that we need to further our understanding of the brain. And also, um, there's a continuous back and forth between the engineering and the application so that we can improve our devices so that they can be used for many other uh, universities and other neuroscientists, not just for one particular group. We use the unique capabilities here in the Center for Bioengineering to make these polymer devices. My name is Angela Tucker and I work for the Center for Bioengineering. I do all of the microfabrication for all of our uh, neural devices. I spend all of my time in the clean room. Um, I do all of the design and building for a wide variety of applications. So the fabrication is all done in the clean room um, and this is mainly because we want to make sure everything stays nice and clean and so we can control the environment. Um, the main technique we use for doing patterning is called photolithography. You can think of it as like old school photography. You know, we expose a pattern and then we actually develop it. It's actually very similar to old school photography. <laughs> and then with that we can make all of the patterns that we need in the metal and the polymers to actually make the devices at the end of the day. Healthcare, as we know, tends to be a um, decades-long process. Anytime you're bringing in a new drug 
or a new device to the field. It usually takes much longer and there, in the meantime, millions of people suffering um, at, with different diseases when we have these research tools that um, end up staying on a bench scale rather than uh, being used for in, in hospital settings. By pushing these healthcare technologies, we are able to gather more information more quickly to help the FDA get the approvals that are required and also to help uh, doctors and scientists figure out what's going on with the body when it's a disease or in a case of a brain disorder. The pharmaceutical interventions we have for things like Parkinson's and Alzheimer's are you know, minimally effective, but they don't actually tell us how these, uh, how these disorders function and how they develop over time. The devices we're building here, these neuromodulation systems, will actually enable both. They'll actually allow us to both understand the disorders and actually treat them. And that's a way that the healthcare system doesn't actually currently function. Will actually change the way the healthcare system actually is able to, to treat their patients.